Good morning and welcome to St. James Church. We are glad you are with us online this morning. We are online only today. And we welcome back Father Rick Couch to celebrate for you first with us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. And in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, Today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. 
Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue in Nazareth. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah. And when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was severe famine all over the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Sarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are before Sunday after the Epiphany. And we have in our readings, the center of them, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. We call the love chapter. Probably one of the most familiar passages used extensively in wedding ceremonies. All this image of love and how we hold that up as the ideal in our marriages and our lives. When really it is the foundation of our communal life. It's the foundation of the church. So we take this passage of love and it's bracketed, however, by these other two passages which are full of love, but in a much different way. We say God is love. We read the love passages. We long to know what it would be like to be standing in front of Jesus. The image that we have of him. That we look at him and we would feel God's love pouring out to us. How could you look into the eyes of love incarnate and not feel embraced by God? How could you not be aware of that presence? We, 2,000 years later, that's probably the one thing we regret the most. If only we could have been in the presence of Christ and, and experienced that love firsthand. But we have idealized Jesus in this way. I don't think we look at him or his ministry or his words realistically by putting him in that sort of hyper love mode. After all, they did kill him after all, hang him on the cross. And they may say, well, well, that was the Romans. They didn't want anyone usurping their power. Or that was the Pharisees. They were afraid of Jesus 
upsetting the cart. But in this passage, this is not the Romans or the Pharisees. This is his hometown. This is where he grew up. The synagogue in which he grew up, he would go there on the Sabbath. He would play with their children. They knew him. Oh, this is Jesus, Joe and Mary's boy from down the road. But yet they got so angry with him, they were going to kill him. Not turn him over to the police and let someone else do it. With their own hands, they were going to hurl him off a cliff. And if that didn't do it, I'm sure they would have stoned him right there at the base of the cliff. What did Jesus do or say at this point that made them so angry, this man of love, this love incarnate? He dared speak truth to power. He told them the truth. He told them that God doesn't play favorites. Now you may think you're God's chosen people, but there were a lot of widows in the time of Elijah. God didn't speak to any of the Jewish Hebrew widows. There were a lot of lepers in the time of Elijah. He didn't deal with those. He went to Naaman, a Syrian. God doesn't play favorites. God's love is inclusive. It's not just about you. They became enraged. They didn't want to hear the truth about God's love. That it's for everyone. The prophet Jeremiah. This passage is used a lot in ordinations. We've got marriages and ordinations. About the calling of Naomi, but I'm just a youth. I don't know what to say. God says, don't worry about it. I'll put my words in your mouth. But it's not really the calling of Jeremiah that's so important in this passage. It's what he's called to do. Again, the prophets are to speak truth to power. I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and pull down, to destroy, to overthrow, and to build and to plant. The words of God shake us up. They rattle our very core. The whole incarnation, the birth of Jesus in the manger. Mary's Magnificat. The mighty will be cast down and the lowly will be lifted up. But people in power and privilege don't like to hear that. People in power and privilege don't like to feel threatened don't like to feel that other people have the same rights and are loved as God by God as much as they are. Speak truth to power. The truth of God's love. So what do these passages mean for us? Two things. First, encourages us to speak truth to the power that we know. When we see injustice, when we see the downtrodden, when we see the lowly, how do we support them? How do we support the widow, the orphan, the foreigner in our land? How do we speak to the 1% about the rest of the world that is in need? Can we talk about God's inclusive, radical love to those power and privilege. But we do, do disservice to the gospel when it's always about other people. How am I to talk to those people? You know, those people with power and privilege. And you may have in your mind who you think that might be. Leaders of government. Who knows? But the other aspect of the gospel is it's always about what does it say to you? How does this gospel speak to you? Because let's face it, as Americans, we are in power and privilege. 
You may not be a millionaire. You may be on a fixed income. You may be on Medicare. You may even be on government assistance. You can be on welfare in America and be richer than most of the world. Like it or not, we have power and privilege. How do you use your power and privilege? How does this passage speak to you? What do you need to hear about how you look at the world around you? Can you see your privilege? Can you see those who have less privilege than you? And how you can reach out to them? This gospel is not just about looking up and say, look at me down here, all you up there, because there's always somebody lower up down the totem pole than you. It's about looking down as well and holding your hand out to them in love because God values and loves the downtrodden, the marginalized, the other. In our lives, at some times, we're always the privileged, and the other in whatever situation we be. That is what we see clearly. In the love chapter, I used to see as a child. As an adult, I see things through the eyes of Christ. I look at the world through the eyes of God, where it's to be a level field We're all God's children, regardless of our government, our race, our creed, our skin color, our nationality, whatever it may be. We are all God's children, and we are called to love all equally. That's the message that almost got Jesus killed in his hometown. That's the message that we're to hear in our hometown. And how we prayerfully live that out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I ask of prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops, Michael and Terry, for our deacon, Mary, for our visiting clergy, for the Church of the Providence of the Indian Ocean, for St. Paul's Church, Henderson, and for racial healing, and for the Daughters of the King. Pray for the Church. I ask for prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for Joe, our president, and Andy, our governor, for those on active duty, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. For those on our parish prayer list and those who have received our healing blankets. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those suffering from COVID 19, for all healthcare workers, first responders, scientists and government officials. Pray for all who suffer and those who minister to them. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I ask your prayers for those who have departed this life and for the families of the departed. 
pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those celebrating anniversaries and birthdays. Let us pray together for our search committee. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on St. James Church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
Because of the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. <clears throat> Roman man is handed over the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ to the bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, <coughs> he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life. Sanctify us also, <clears throat> that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.